So we started these seeds two days ago, and so far we've been able to monitor the temperatures pretty well. These are the peppers and the rosemary, and they're staying about 85 to 90 degrees. I've got the celery seeds down here. I was finding they were getting a little bit too hot. I also planted some leeks, so I'm trying to keep those at 70 to 75 degrees. These are at 75 now. So we are going to head out and look for some chaga. We found some unexpectedly the other day when we took the dogs on a walk and we want to go back and try and get more. All right, we found one already right here and it only took us a few minutes and we're going to use the hatchet and take her off. I don't know if you can see that all the way over there, but there's three pieces on that tree, probably like 30 feet up. And I'm not Spider-Man, so I don't think we're going to be able to get them. Birch bark. Are you doing arts and crafts? Bushcraft. Okay, we're walking around in like two to three feet of snow, trying to find the moose tracks and stay on those. And it is crazy hot, it's 45 degrees or 44 degrees. Definitely probably should have just worn shorts and a tank top. So I found this little guy under a tree, half eaten, and it's still warm, so something was just eating it. I don't know what it is, like a big squirrel or a mink maybe. It's got really, really soft fur, so it doesn't seem like it'd be a squirrel. It has a black tip. Oh no, it's dark brown. Yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna throw him back under the tree. Wish me luck. All right, so we found another pretty good one here, and this one, it's hard to tell what it smells like, but this one, for some reason to me, smells like a melon that's like just not really sweet. It smells really watery and a little sweetness to it. But let us know if you found this stuff, what you think it smells like, because it's kind of it's kind of hard to explain. It smells like a pear, maybe. A pear? I feel like it almost smells like a pumpkin. Something, Good. something sweet. Yeah. So it's probably not ideal to bring the dogs with us, but Bandit does pretty well. Bo kind of has a little bit of a tricky time. We try to just kick in the snow a little more so he can follow behind us easily, more easily. So we're gonna call it quits now. We got two specimens and saw a lot more that we couldn't reach, but we have quite a bit at home and we got our exercise for the day, so we're gonna head home now. Now that we're back, I am going to get this chaga chopped up into more manageable size pieces. So I'm cutting it right now that we just got back because it's still softer. Once we dry it out, it's gonna be a lot harder to cut up and it's already pretty tricky to cut up now.
Now that we got this chopped up, I'm going to get the dried stuff put away in some mason jars. We're still learning about chaga, but we discovered that it does need to dry out for a few days. I'm gonna put it right back here behind the wood stove. You wanna dry it out so it doesn't have moisture in it anymore to where it can grow anything like mold. Another reason you'd wanna dry it out is if you wanna ground it down to powder. So with the leftover bits, I'm gonna go ahead and make some tea today. When it's ground up, you don't have to let it steep as long. We don't really have a way to grind it up, so we just have been steeping the chunks for a few hours, and that usually gives you a good brew. But this one shouldn't even take maybe half an hour with how small the pieces were. So our tea is finished. Eric went ahead and put some maple syrup in here for us, and we strained it in our French press. There we go. I'm going to let that cool before I drink it. <laughs>